I became engaged with the Holocaust um, as an undergraduate, uh, mainly, but I feel that the Holocaust, and I, I'm writing this in my book, Shoah through Muslim eyes, is unprecedented. So I also teach other genocides like Bosnia, Armenia, Sudan, um, Rwanda, but I find the Holocaust to be very unprecedented in the sense that it was an event that changed history, Jewish history, but it also was a genocide where every single Jew was persecuted, no matter where they lived. It was, it's not just a European story. We all tend to think it's a European story, but it went all the way to North Africa, to Greece, to places that you couldn't even imagine um, where the Nazi party or the Vichy government could get to. Uh, that to me <clears throat> was, an, it's an interesting historical fact, but I also think that it was one of the genocides where people were really, really killed because of their religion, uh, specifically being Jewish. All uh, the laws under the Nuremberg laws were always about the Jewish race, and it was the blood. Whereas if you compare it to something like Bosnia, where you know Bosnian Muslims, especially women, were you know severely persecuted and raped, they were ethnically the same. And there was a nationalistic rift going on there within the country that didn't spill into places like Albania. Whereas in um, Germany, and in, you know, you had this village obviously very largely in Poland or in places like Ukraine and places like North Africa. I think the other reason the Holocaust was really important to me is because I think it really redefined Jewish theology in many ways. Um, I read a lot of uh, different Jewish uh, religious texts that talk about the question of God and intervention. And to me, that's an important question even in my faith. But how that's measured or seen or looked at after the Holocaust is very different. So these different texts like Richard Rubinstein and Emil Fackenheim uh, really shaped my thinking about not just, you know, uh, genocide, but how do we believe in God after such a catastrophe? And I think that's really important for all of us today globally because uh, if you look at the crisis in Syria today, it's terrible. Um, there, there are seven million refugees um, that have absolutely nowhere to go. And you hear a very loud Jewish voice is saying we should not let this happen because this happened to us. Um, when Sudan occurred um, back in 2005, I was in Los Angeles and it was Jewish Watch that came and helped me and helped me train my students about what was going on in Sudan. So I feel like <clears throat> there's a responsibility and a call for responsibility in terms of Judaism as a faith, but also as people. And that's how I got interested in the Holocaust. But the Holocaust is also a story which shows you how culturally diverse Jews were and are today, that there are you know, all kinds of Jews with stories uh, of Jews in the Arab world, Jews in Africa, Jews in India, Jews in Eastern Europe, Jews everywhere, and it gives you a diversity of who Jews were. And as a person who obviously was born way after uh, the establishment of Israel, that to me was shocking, because I only saw one monolithic, one homogeneous group, and that was the Jewish, you know, Western American. And that, it really blew my stereotypes. And I think if you start learning and challenging yourself with new material about groups of people, then it really makes you intrigued. It really stops you and it makes you think, wow, you know, Jews are not just one thing. They are, they're not all Israeli. You know, they're all over the world. And there's a connection to Israel. And why is that connection there? And so that's how I started my pursuit of the Holocaust. And then now I'm very, very much um, committed to really talking loudly about the anti-Semitism that goes on in my community, which is the Muslim community.